Hello, hello. All right. Hmm. This could be interesting to view your comments here. You guys are a little bit higher than I typically have uh, my camera mounted today, but we'll give her a whirl. Okay, let's bring in just a little bit here if we can. If my camera co is going to cooperate today. Hang on. Silly thing. This takes longer than making the cards sometimes. <laughs> okay. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the Copic Air brush system and this happens to be based on a card that I posted recently. This was for Craft Roulette which is a game show on YouTube where um, you have a roulette wheel and the guest Mary Fun Gun she spins the wheel uh, for four different parameters and you must take those four parameters and create a card using those as your guidelines. So this week for Craft Roulette number 62, it was Slimline Card. Um, the colors were blue plus two, uh, Critters, and Confetti. So this is the card that I made. And I used the airbrush system. So that's why we're going to talk about it today. So I'm just going to set this aside for the moment. And we're going to talk about the actual system. So this is the... The end that does all the work. This is your Copic Air, Air Grip. So, uh, typically this system only fits the sketch markers, which is the oval barreled markers and not the chow, which are the square barreled. As you guys know, if you're a Copic lover, Copics are, du are dual ended. So you have the nib, the wider nib at end, this end, and then you have the brush end at this end. Now, this is specifically designed so that you put your Copic markers in this way. So you match the angle. See the angle of this air distribution tip here? See that? See how it matches that nib end? So that's how you match them up. So you literally slip it in to the system and then it'll kind of click right to the end. And if you look carefully, that air will then blow across the end of that nib and how that's how it works. Now, because they're, the barrels are completely the same shape at the other end, you can put the brush tip into the system as well and that gives you a whole different spray pattern so we're going to talk about that too okay this is a <laughs> this marker is uh, needs to be replaced um, I'm going to bring in just a white piece of paper here okay uh I'm going to grab a nice juicy marker that I know has a lot of ink in it. Um, I do actually have a Copic chart where I keep an idea as to all the markers that I have um, refills for. Because even though I've been coloring with Copics for probably close to 13 or 14 years, I still don't have all my refills. So they are expensive, especially here in Canada. So I get them when I can. So we're gonna put in the larger nibbed end and I'm gonna show you what happens. What you do is you put your finger on the top of the air grip and that's what you use to apply your air, okay? Before I do that, let's bring in my actual compressor. This happens to be a Copic specific model. It is designed specifically for this system and is sold by Copic. So it's 
It's small compared to my old compressor, but it's still a little bit hard to put under camera. So it has a um, bleed valve down here, right there. And uh, it's not sure how much it weighs. I'll have to look that up, but it doesn't weigh all that much. It has a nice hand grip, so it's actually nice and portable. Mine always just stays underneath my desk and it really doesn't move. And then it just has a really simple switch here. So we're going to turn it on and this is what happens when it starts to fill. Um, compared to most compressors, this little fella is quiet. Yes, it's very handy to have and it doesn't take up that much space in the desk and that's where it stays. So I'm going to put it back underneath <laughs> so it's out of the way. Okay. Now that the air system is full, now we can take it and use it with the system. Because the air capacity on the Copic um, system, it's not a great deal of air. So it does tend to fill up as you can see it. Or actually, sorry, you can hear it in the background here. It, the more you use it, the longer it has to fill and generate that pressure so you can do quick light passes with it and then you can spray it for longer periods of time and depending on how juicy your marker is lay down as much ink as you want okay i'm just gonna flip this over and i'm gonna flip this over so we're gonna put on the the brush end. And the brush end gives you a little bit different application of ink. So you can hold it for a little longer. It gives you more of a, a cloudy, uh, more dispersed, but larger droplet of ink. I like to use it to create splatter on the back of my cards. And I'll be doing that with you today. So depending on the darkness of your ink and how juicy the pigments are or how big the pigments are in that ink gives you a different effect. So there it's kind of splattery. And then here it's a lot softer. Okay, so that's how you can use the airbrush system. And it's... Um, you can get a system where you can make it portable. So this air grip here just attaches to um, a can of air, which is specifically uh, designed to load onto the air grip. Uh, so if you want to take this uh, to a retreat and not have the compressor, you can get bottles of air. Uh, just know that um, some bottles last longer than others based on their volume. So you just have to check the can. Okay. I don't use the cans anymore just because my compressor is just as easy to take along with me. So, I've already kind of started the card just for time's sake. And what I've done is I have stamped the images from this MFT set called Sweet Tweet Memories. And we have the two little two little birds on the swing here. And I have stamped them in Memento Tuxedo Black ink, ready for Copic coloring. This is one of my favorite inks for Copic coloring. All right, so now that we have it stamped, I've also created some masks. So I used my big roll of Eclipse paper here, buy it in a big roll. I love this, because I can just cut off a piece of whatever size I need and stamp it out and then fussy cut my image. So I've already applied my three little leaves and my stem with masking paper. So I'm just gonna add my mask using the Eclipse paper for the two sweet little birdies here. There we go. So now my entire image, anything that has to be colored, the masks have been applied. Now, because I'm using air, I am going to actually attach this 
to my sheet of paper because sometimes with the air, it likes to shoot the whole project um, off the area. And I don't want to do that <laughs> because that doesn't help. All right. So we're going to start by making our sky in behind our cute little birds here. And of course, you can make your sky any color that you want to. The sky, haha, -ha, is the limit. <laughs> so, the one good thing about the system is that you need to recognize markers. Uh, the fuller, the better, which means the, the juicier, the better. So... So this happens to be uh, BG13, BG13, and it's kind of like a tealy color. So I'm going to start by making kind of a soft cloudy background. And I'm going to kind of keep it centralized to around our images. So just a light application first. And I will go over my entire card panel. I'm just kind of making colored blotchy areas nice and soft to start because you can start off soft and you can always add more color. You can't take it away. The other thing with uh, using this system that I find, and I'm not sure if this is common amongst other colorists, is that um, sometimes my backgrounds are a little bit tacky. Um, they seem to be sticky when I use the airbrush system, but I just combat that with a little bit of embossing um, anti-static powder or a little brush of baby powder would even work as well. And then just give it a wipe down and it seems to take away all those sticky spots. So again, I'm just applying my teal ink softly across the background here. Now my masks have gaps in between. I did fussy cut out all of those gaps. So anything that you apply over top is going to go right between, which is good because you don't want it to have this white gap. It would look really funny. When creating masks, you always want to cut on that black line or into the black line. That way you don't get these funny little white gaps or shadows around your images. Okay, so we've got a fair amount of our BG13 down. Let's go in and bring a blue in as well. Just double checking. Okay, this is a B05, and I always start by checking to see how much ink is coming out. So that's hence the scrap paper. We're going to go right over some of the spots with the green. Kind of want to blend in the background. Now, you will notice with some markers that you get um, larger splatter in some areas and I think it has to do with the pigment size so some markers just have bigger pigments or they're juicier and so you will get bigger splatter sometimes but I'm okay with that it just makes your card that much more unique my card panel is cut down to four by five and a quarter today, which allows for like a nice white frame around an A2 size card. And of course you can layer and experiment as much as you want with this system. So the lighter the color, um, the more you're gonna have to spray to get that color. So if you use a more intense color or a deeper color, then you're going to find that you're going to have uh, more application onto your paper. Okay, let's try a B16 here, B16. And of course that one is too dry. <laughs> so, 
Let's go in with a really dark one. This is a B18. And just see if this one is juicy enough for me today. And it's got a little bit of ink, so we'll use this one sparingly here. So we're just going to deepen some of our areas. And again, just experiment. It's supposed to look like a cloudy sky, so if you feel you're done at this point, then you're done. Okay, so let's go in and experiment with the other end of our markers. Okay, this again is the B18, I'm just swapping in. So we're gonna put in the uh, brush tip and you get a different application. So if I just touch the top of my air grip, then I get a much bigger splatter. It's a, actually a physically larger application of ink to the area. There we go. So it's it's a little bit different application with that on the card. And let's see, am I gonna go, I think what I'll do is, we're gonna add some, I know this sounds funny, but we're gonna add some brown here. Um, I'm not sure if this will work for me today or not. So this is uh, an E29 or an E29. Again, always test off to the side to see what kind of splatter you're going to get because sometimes the splatter is too big and it's not what you're looking for. So, you'll also need to kind of experiment with how far away from your cardstock you need to spray to get different effects. So, I got a much more dispersed splatter by holding the air grip quite a fair distance away versus getting in close where you get a, a closer cluster. So experiment with your, your um, distances. So let's go in, see if I can bring you guys in a bit here, cooperate. We're going to do the, the best part of the card is the reveal. So we're going to take off our leaf masks and this one I didn't quite get all the way out to the edge so I had to cut another piece <laughs> and then of course the best part is the big one they're cute little birds and look aren't they cute now I will take this mask and spent all that time fussy cutting it out I just stick it to the back of my stamp packaging and then I can use it again uh, generally eclipse paper will stay sticky for at least two or three uses so I can use it again so now now that we've got our splatter backgrounds and we're already revealed here let's do a little coloring on our birdie felons um, because I want them contrasted to the blue, I don't want to make them a bluebird because then they would disappear. So you want to use something else. So I'm going to go with maybe like a robin type looking bird. And we're going to start with the breast of the bird here. So this is an R05. And I'm just going to start by putting down a base coat of my R05. And apparently I need to re-ink this little fella because it's a little bit dry, but I'm okay with that. We can fix that. Now to soften that, I'm going to bring in um, an R02. I'm just going to go over the entire thing and just knocks it back just an ever slight bit with the red. And I'm just going to pull it up and above, just kind of pulling and blending out those brush marks that were in there just because I, I don't have as much ink in that marker. So 
Don't be afraid to still continue coloring. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we're going to go to our brownie tones here. And I think I'm going to start with an E21. I'm going to start by just doing the rest of our little baby here. Because I want to put it down as a base coat and then go right into that pink there just to soften it out and we're going to do the tail okay so let's start to shade this little fella and make him look rounded I've got my E23 I'm going to start around kind of its head, and we're going to do the underside of his tail. I'm going to do kind of like a accentuate his eyelids there, give him a little shading, and then we're just going to blend everything. We'll do the top of his wings, pretty much getting rid of that E21 there in that space. And then we're going to blend. We want to make that E23 kind of blend into that E21. And work it right into that background. Now, E21 has a lot of blender solution because it is one of the lighter shades in the E-line. And based on its color numbering, being a one means it has a lot of blender solution in it. Okay, so I've taken a lot of my E23 out there. So let's put a little bit more back in, darken that shape, get that contour back. And again, I'm just gonna go and blend out that line little bit just so it's not so stark in there so you can go in and play just gonna blend that right there and we're gonna make our other little fella a little bit darker now I'm going to start with my darkest color this time instead. You can go from light to dark, dark to light. It's completely up to you. Everybody has their own way of doing things and their own reasoning behind it. So I'm all for whatever works for you. Okay, this is my midtone, my E23. And I'm just going to pull those darker tones out farther into the body. Trying to keep his beak there from becoming brown. There we go. Whoops. Now going back to our lightest is our E21 or E21. If you want to maintain the light, start in the light area without touching your medium tone yet, and then you can work into your medium tone. Like that. You can go in and rework this as many times as you want. Whatever kind of works for you. So, if you need um, a color in between two, let's say for instance you've got your E21 and your E23, if you're finding that this is a little bit too dark, take the cap off. It doesn't matter which end you play with. You can use, sometimes you have ink on the barrel. I quite often use that. And you can use this to make a tone that acts like it's in between the two markers. It's a great way to blend. So I'm just picking up 
a little bit of that 23 on my 21 tip just so that it acts like the color in between the two markers so it makes for a quick blend and some some markers don't like to blend so that's a great way to get them to cooperate and talk to one another so now the breast on this little guy I'm actually going to start with did I leave my pink marker yes there it is okay I'm gonna start with our lighter tone or R02 first so this little baby's breast is going to be a little bit lighter in color because maybe he's the boy robin because male robins are typically not as brightly colored as the females so again if you want um, these two colors to talk then use the ink on the barrel or you can do touch to tip to tip as well you can also do that so I'm gonna work at adding a little bit of this R05 to his breast so again it's just gonna come in a little bit more subtle by using the tip to tip method there we go okay And we need some green on our leaves. So I'm going to go fairly dark, actually. I love the YGs for my greens. So I'm going to start by putting a fair amount of my YG17 down. Start from kind of the base of the leaf and leaf and work out. And then I'm gonna blend it. Let's go with a YG1 YG05, sorry. This is a much lighter tone. So I'm just I'm gonna flick the opposite way. I'm gonna flick into the dark. And what that does is it pushes that darker ink into your paper. Okay, and our tree branch, let's go fairly dark. Let's go um, E47, which is a nice dark, rich brown. I'm not going to put any shading on the tree branch. So I'm just going to keep it simple, and I'm going to color it right off the page there. And I think to bring in a little bit more green, I think we'll color their little swing in using greens as well. And I think we will use the darker YG just to put a little bit of shadow underneath both of my little babies. And we'll just blend that out with that YG05. Just a tinkle there, and then of course we need to do their beaks too. Robins have typically kind of an orangey beak, so this is a Y17. Color them in, and they need just a touch of shading, and I'm gonna use a, a Y38. Uh, and I'm not really citing any particular um, light source I'm just keeping them cute and you know what maybe we will put a little bit of a rosy cheek on this baby so this is the uh, R02 and I'm just literally cheeking her up there and you know what we can really Pretty much call this done. It's a very very simple image. You could go in and uh, add more color but I think that's perfect. So if you're interested in purchasing uh, the Copic airbrush system, uh, it's a great investment. Uh, you can uh, 
invest in the air grip with a uh, the connective tubing plus the air can for one price. So you get a little kind of like unit right then and there. It's a great way to kind of start. Um, and then you can move up to a compressor. So awesome. I like to thank you today for joining me and I hope to see you again soon. I hope you give the Copic Airbrush system a try if you get a chance to. Thanks guys. Have a great day.